Do you have to take vitamin K2 to get better vitamin D3 absorption? Well, the answer is actually no, but I'm gonna tell you why there's a synergistic relationship between vitamin K2 and D3, and why a lot of supplement manufacturers include these two together. Before I go into the video, go ahead and hit that follow button, leave me a comment to help the algorithm, and let's get into it. So vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 are both fat soluble vitamins. So actually they should be taken with a meal, a fatty meal to help better absorption, better assimilation. The reason that you pair these two uh, together is for calcium assimilation and absorption. If you have low vitamin D or you have low calcium, the parathyroid glands will then start activating vitamin D3 as you see on this picture. When this uh, cascade starts happening, you release more calcium into the blood and if you don't have adequate vitamin K2 levels and certain proteins that uh, vitamin K2 activates like matrix GLA protein and osteocalcin, well then calcium has a chance to sit on the arteries. So you do not want this. You want calcium to be redistributed back into the bone to help further bone density. So that's why you a lot of times you'll see vitamin D3 pair with vitamin K2 for cardiovascular reasons and for bone health reasons. So this little guy to my left is a protein receptor called matrix GLA protein. Its job, it's a vitamin K2 dependent protein, and its job is to redirect calcium that wants to sit on the arteries and bounce it back into the bone with the help of osteocalcin. Here to my right, we're seeing osteocalcin, which is another vitamin K2 dependent protein. It's help carboxylating calcium to get it back into the bone where it's supposed to be. We do not want calcification of the arteries. That's why vitamin K2 and vitamin D3 have a synergistic relationship, but they're not necessarily helping the vitamin D3 absorption. Now, what does help activation of vitamin D3 is magnesium, which we're gonna talk about right now. All right, so in this chart, we're actually showing vitamin D from sunlight or from food sources, how it's getting converted to the liver, then to the kidneys. All these little circles here are magnesium. So there's eight different steps that are magnesium dependent to help with active activation of vitamin D to vitamin D3. All right, so we know that calcium, magnesium, they should be a balanced ratio, right? So we have the yin-yang effect chart right here, what calcium does, what magnesium does. Usually calcium is going to cause contractions. Magnesium is going to lessen those contractions, it's gonna help more relaxation. So we need a balance in the body. So a couple closing thoughts is that vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 work synergistically for cardiovascular health and for bone health. They help redistribute calcium back into the bone where it's supposed to be. Also magnesium is a crucial cofactor in all of this. Always ask your doctor before you're taking new supplements and if you're on a blood thinner like warfarin or coumadin, be careful with vitamin K2 and of course ask your doctor about this. If you found it helpful, please share with a friend and we'll see you in the next video.